Helium Comedy Club. How are you? What a time. Let's have a hand for all the staff here real quick, huh? Getting you drunk. You drinking? Who's drinking? Huh? I don't know what this is. I don't feel good. I, I had too many Red Bulls. I could die up here. Holy shit. I don't know. You know when you go to Safeway and you get the carrot cake and then you eat the whole thing on accident and then you start sweating from eating cake, you know? Yeah, that's how I feel right now. That's four sugar-free Red Bulls. Sugar-free, though. My body's a temple. Sugar-free. Let's be, let's be realistic. You fuck with Red Bulls, sir? You do with the Red Bulls? Yeah, they're so good. I love them. I love them a lot, maybe too much. Uh, my new thing, though, is cold brew coffee. I hear you back there, white girls. Settle down. Uh, cold brew coffee. Cold brew coffee's serious. Red Bull gives you wings. Cold brew coffee makes you want to take your microwave apart and put it back together. You know what I mean? I have, I have smoked crack before you guys. I'm telling you. Red Bull's cold brew coffee. Meth from Gresham. You know, we've all... We all tried it together. You were there. I saw recently they're, they're putting CBD in the cold brew. Have you seen this? Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't... I don't think we should be mixing the uppers and the downers like that. That's, that's how Chris Farley died, okay? That's how uh, cool. <laughs> Thank you for not getting sad. Uh, you do CBDs, sir? Yeah? You know, <laughs> he's like, I just do the weed, man. I don't, I don't need anything extra. Uh, I don't do weed, as you can tell by the fact that I call it doing weed. I'm not, I'm not what you call a cool person. I realize I look like Doe the Bounty Hunter. Uh, but if the bounties were chicken wings, yeah, I know. Uh, I know, it's fine. <laughs> CBD, they did, if you don't know, they took the part of weed that makes your body feel good, they put it by itself. People seem to like that. But I feel like, I feel like weed's the only drug you could do that with, okay? Like, no one's asking for just a, a, can I get a small pill that's just the part of cocaine that makes me clench my jaw for four hours? <laughs> Maybe a brown glass tincture I can dip in my tea every morning that's just the part of mushrooms that makes me shit my pants the next day, huh? How about, how about a five milligram cream I can rub on my body that's just the part of Molly that makes it so my dick gets hard but won't come, right? <laughs> This guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I did that joke last week in Yakima, Washington. This, and I was like, this guy, knows, this dude stood up. He's like, the fuck I do? I was like, what are you so mad about, sir? Your wiener doesn't work? Or that you do drugs? I do, I've been traveling a lot for comedy. I was just in Bend, Oregon. You guys are like Bend, Oregon? Yeah. What a shithole. Uh, all the gas stations in Bend close at nine o'clock at night. I was trying to leave Bend. I swear to God, I, I couldn't find gas. I pulled up to a stranger at a red light. I made him roll his window down. I was like, dude, can you help me? And he's like, what? And I was like, can you tell me where an open gas station is? <laughs> he looked at me right in the face and goes, bro, this car's electric. And he drove away. <laughs> Fuck that town. Fuck that town. The Dutch Brothers is open. The gas stations are closed. That's not a world I want to live in. I've been traveling a lot. I feel, feel good. Any, you guys are all local. You guys seasonal affected? Who gets sad when the sun doesn't come out? Everybody? Yeah. Yeah. You guys should fucking move. Uh, my mental health hasn't been great. I, I feel like the murder podcasts aren't helping. Uh, just murder pumped into my brain through earbuds for eight to 10 hours a day. I, you don't realize the fucked up shit they say on a murder podcast until like your Bluetooth gets disconnected and it just starts playing in the wild. It's worse than porn. You're just like, oh no, turn that off, turn that off. There, there's a podcast I really like. It's called DNA ID and it's like murders that happen in the 80s and they're solving them because of like familial DNA, 23 and Me. But the lady who narrates it is very monotone, and she just says the most fucked up stuff with like no effect on her voice. She's just like, sadly, the sex toy they found in the basement contained no DNA. There's, I'm just at a red light with my volume up, you know? Like the car next to me is like, what the fuck? 
The six pubic hairs they found on the corpse were very interesting, though. <laughs> As I'm in the McDonald's drive through you know, and they're just like, what is happening over there? I... <laughs> I love that show because, like, at the end of every episode, she's like, if you're a bad guy and you're out there, we're going to find you. And, like, I, I like that, right? But I think about the flip side, which is, you know, like, in 1987, you fucking murdered somebody, right? You had a bad day. Some kid in an electric car laughed in your face or whatever, right? And you fucking kill that guy, right? And then you've woken up every day for the next 35 years like, I think I'm going to get away with it, right? I think I committed the perfect crime. I pulled it off. I did it. And then your shithead nephew that lives in Eugene is just like, you know, I wonder if we're Swedish. You know, grandma, grandma used to always tell us we were Swedish. I'm gonna spit in this tube, mail it off. Boom, fucking Uncle Murderer's busted, right? I don't think that's fair. Put in their time. I feel like the commercials during the murder podcast are getting too on the nose. There's another, I'm plugging too many murder podcasts, but there's a, another one I really like. It's called uh, Park Predators. Yeah, big Park Predators fan. And it's just people that get murdered in national parks. And it's great, it's great. But then the, commer like the presenting sponsor is the U.S. Forestry Service. Like trying to drum up tourism. Like it's their target audience. They're like, hey, go, come walk around outside. You never know what you're gonna find. It's like. No, I, I'm gonna find my murderer. They just told us that. Yeah, I also think it's weird that they're all sponsored by BetterHelp, the phone therapy. Yeah, that's too on the nose. It's not even a commercial. It's just a voice that comes on after two hours of 911 calls or the real voice of the Zodiac or whatever fucked up shit you're listening to that day. It's just this voice that comes on. It's like, hey, bud. You having a hard time? Something stand in the way of you and your happiness? You think you might need to talk to somebody? Well, go to the website, betterhelp.com, and use the promo code Duffel Bag Full of Baby Heads, and we're gonna get you somebody to talk to. That's stupid. Don't clap for that. I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been trying not to be so fat all the time. Uh, yeah. The Red Bulls and the cake aren't helping. Uh, I don't know. It's my New Year's resolution from 2020 was to not be so fat all the time. I'm waiting for the fifth booster or whatever to go back to the gym. I feel, I don't feel safe. I, uh, yeah, I don't like it. I, was, I started going to spin class. Uh, that's not for fat people. Uh, the spin, the spin class I go to was taught by this like 50 year old lady who was like mean to everybody during class, which was great. But she'd also say dumb shit. It was like the hardest part of class. She's like, use your legs. It's a bicycle. It's the only way I know how to do this. I don't know what else you want from me. Stop bullying me. I, uh, I, have, a, I have a sister who recently had a major weight loss surgery and uh, she lost over hundred pounds from that. Thank you, thank you. I'll tell her that seven people gave a shit. Uh, I was trying to be supportive, so I was like, sis, let's do something healthy together. And I thought she was gonna say something easy, like we're gonna go for walks on Tuesdays or something that I could get behind. And instead she signed us up to run a 5K. Uh, yeah, and if you've never run a 5K, fucking don't. Uh, it's really early on Saturday and you don't wanna be there. But I was like looking around at who's by us and there was a lady right by us who was like 11 months pregnant. That's too many months, sir, yeah. She was like this fucking pregnant, right? And I, I told my sis like, we don't have to take this seriously or anything, but the pregnant lady's not gonna beat me, okay? Got a very small amount of pride left, if you haven't been able to tell from the last eight minutes of your life. And we get to where you can see the finish line and the pregnant lady, she's like 20 yards in front of us and I took off running. <laughs> and I smoked that pregnant lady. Yeah, really embarrassing for her, yeah, yeah. But then like 20 yards in front of the pregnant lady, there was this group of like five women that I guess were in their mid 50s, and I think one of them heard me running, which is accurate, right? <laughs> I'm just standing here and I'm sweating, all right? And she looks back and sees me, and then they all like look back, and then they all start running. <laughs> 
which lets me know they had the same conversation about me that I had about the pregnant lady, right? Yeah. They're like, no matter what happens today, sisters, 300 pound old Navy model isn't gonna beat us. And they were right, I didn't. I'm Jeremiah Coughlin, I love you.